Lovely Planet is a Japanese themed game developed by an Indian guy and a team called Quick Tequila. It's a platformer slash shooting game played from a first person perspective, but I wouldn't call it a first person shooter. I don't even really know what to call it. From simply looking at footage for this game, you first notice it's got an extremely appealing visual style and a catchy soundtrack, but what else does the game offer? Now I've heard this game described as Quake meets Little Big Planet, and whilst yeah, it does have similar movement controls to older shooters like Quake, and the adorably cute tone of a game like Little Big Planet, Lovely Planet feels more like a fleshed out flash game than anything else. With purposely simplistic visuals, it's a game with a very simple premise combining platforming and basic shooting as you move through a whole heap of levels in the fastest time possible, avoiding enemies and other hazards. There's a leaderboard as well, flooded with the times from people quite obviously hacking or cheating, and your overall time gets you a score of anywhere from one to three stars. There's practically no customization options for PC, aside from changing V-Sync and the frame rate, and there's literally only half a dozen buttons mapped for the controls. Every level in Lovely Planet is broken up into five different worlds, and within each of these you've got anywhere from 15 to 20 or so different levels. Each of these levels has to at least be completed to gain access to the next, and each world has to be completed in its entirety before you can move on. Now you've got hostile enemies in the game world that often fire projectiles, and you've also got non-hostile characters who just kind of stand around in the line of fire. And your goal is to shoot all the bad guys without hitting the good guys in the process, or else you have to restart the level all over again. This is all whilst completing the basic platforming sections and trying to avoid falling to your death. You've only got one weapon and a single hit will kill you. When you fail a level, it's simply a matter of clicking the left mouse button or pressing R on your keyboard to go right back at it again. Initially, it's really hard to not like this game. The difficulty spike throughout the first few worlds is timed just right and the soundtrack is really awesome. Where it matters most, the controls are smooth and responsive, and you really feel like you're kind of floating around the level, taking out funny looking bad guys with comical frowns on their faces. I'm not gonna lie, it's good fun. But then it gets to the point where the tutorial section is over and the game gets down to brass tacks, and you find yourself replaying levels over and over and over again. At this point, the game devolves into a series of trial and error matches as you try to figure out what you're doing wrong. If doing the same thing over and over is truly insanity, well, this game has made me bonkers. Now, there's really one main reason for this. The game doesn't have a crosshair. Let's just think about that for a moment, shall we? A shooting game without a crosshair. There's bombs that launch up in the air that you have to hit before they land, and later in the game, you also have to shoot down homing projectiles whilst in mere air, and sometimes you're required to even take down multiple targets in a matter of seconds. With this type of gameplay, there is no excuse to not have a crosshair. Now, I read on the Steam forums and the developer has said that this was a conscious choice to make the game more challenging, but I don't see anything challenging about removing the player's ability to properly gauge where a shot is going to be heading. That's just a cheap way to make the game artificially difficult. And this is something that really affects the game quite fundamentally. You often end up just spamming the fire button to make sure you hit your intended target. All the skill goes out the window and it just becomes a matter of luck and guesswork. The Swamp World, which is one of the last worlds in the game, adds a thick layer of fog to make things even more confusing, causing projectiles to literally materialize a few feet away from you. Now, never has a game that looks so sweet and cuddly made me so angry. Playing a lot of the later levels, I'm also reminded of a game like Super Meat Boy, you know, playing a level over and over until you memorize the patterns of enemies and incoming hazards with practically zero room for mistakes. And I've never been a fan of those types of games that are hard just for the sake of being hard, and the only thing you'll ultimately get out of finishing all of this is having your name on a leaderboard somewhere, which has about as much of an overall effect on someone's life as whether or not they chose to wear black or grey socks that day. At the end of the day, you can't really complain too much. This was obviously the direction they wanted to take this game, and they are only asking six bucks for the entire thing. Also, the fact that it's completely devoid of violence means it's great for kids. But keep in mind you're going to be pulling your hair out in some of the later levels, and if you're not the most patient person in the world, like me, then that should be something to keep in mind. But it sure does look pretty.